Okay, so I've chucked back into the deep end and she's on the long arm machine. You can hear that in the background at the moment. She's doing really well and you would have heard some of my explanations of what she needs to do and how to get the feel of the um, machine. And I do it a little bit different for every person because every person understands different things. So at the moment, I've just got to do a, uh, doing a stippling and she's keeping um, control of the machine. And you can see what of a disaster area our background is after a retreat. We've got everything everywhere and I had to get some recording done quickly this morning so I've had to put a blanket up to block out some of the sun. But you can see that, um, you can hear her going there. She's getting a little bit faster and she's getting a little bit more confident. And she's about to realise that if she goes too further much down the quilt she's going to hit the back bar. So um, I'm going to flip the camera back around and you can continue seeing um, how she's going with that. Uh, we have recovered somewhat from retreat, uh, we're four days out from the retreat, we're still pretty tired um, and we're still trying to get the shop back together as well as doing uh, everything else that we've got to do. So just slow down on your curves there Beck, because you'll get um, elongated um, stitches and um, yeah. So I'm going to keep filming back as much as she probably doesn't want me to and show us some encouragements down in the comments everybody and this is the first time that Beck has ever been on the long arm machine and nothing like working for Nicole Reed because she just throws you in the deep end. It's okay, just relax and don't worry about it. You're heading towards the edge, okay? So just look a little bit of where you're going to be going and try to just relax your arms, soften your elbows a bit. Okay, otherwise you'll get sore across the back. Lucky you're having a massage this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect time. <laughs> okay. And what you can can you hear the pitch changing? Yeah. Okay. You want it to get a little bit smoother that pitch, so it's a consistent pitch. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It does. Okay. And you just keep going backwards and forwards. Okay. And you've got like 18 inches on this machine in throat space before you'll hit the bar. So you'll get two or three passes, like you'll actually probably get four passes with the size that you're doing. Yep. And as you're going further down and you get the feel for the machine a bit more, um, that then you can start worrying about whether you're crossing over your threads or anything like that, okay? I don't know who told me that, like treat it like as if you're driving the car, you don't look right at the end of your bonnet, you look at where you're going. Yeah, um, that. So just um, keep that in mind when you're driving it, and um, you'll be all good. That that banging sound you just heard then, that's because you've got paper piecing there with lots of points going in. That was just a yeah, seam. Yeah, and you don't want to go super fast around your curves either because that will elongate your stitches. So you want to just sort of keep a consistent, smooth flow to it. Okay, and you'll get used to it. We'll probably do a couple, like a heap more of these, um, just with stippling, until you get the, the feel of it. Yeah. But you're doing better than most. I've had one girl cry. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah okay. Her anxiety levels went through the roof. That wasn't on my machine. That wasn't on this machine. That no, was on a smaller machine. Oh, okay. um, she just worked herself up and just... She couldn't calm herself back down again, basically. And um, yeah, so that's why I say, you know, like, if need be, have a couple of drinks. <laughs> calm those nerves. <laughs> but you can tell that you're already starting to get smoother, like you've not yeah. got that jerky sound. So when you get to this end, just curve around and go back the other way. Okay. It's not the easiest thing to be chucked in the deep end on, but. That's the way we learn. Yeah, but yeah, and you don't have to make your um, like your, your passes super close either. You can space them out a little bit and um, that and have a bit like make the, the loops a little bit bigger. Um, you can do loop the loop if you wanted to just so you can get like a, a feel for how the machine moves and stuff like that. Yeah. Loop the loop and um, well, stipple's probably the third lesson that you would do. Um, loop the loop is just sort of, you know, like a squiggly line would be what you'd first learn to do just to get the feel of the machine. But I think you're more than capable of doing stippling straight off. So it's sort of like drawing a squiggly line on a piece of paper without crossing over yeah. is the best way to describe it. 
and trying as you get better at doing it and the better at the, the feel of the machine then you would try to focus on keeping your um, loops consistent in size and the spacing between the lines in like um, more consistent um, and so when you look at it you sort of can see a secondary pattern happening with the sibling um, that's sort of how I was taught to do it whether that's right or wrong I don't know but that's how I was told so I think everybody develops their own techniques over time so realistically I don't think there's any right or wrong um, it's just what how you move because each individual person moves completely different to each other so I can't come on and do your stippling because it's not going to be the same because you move different to me. Don't worry about that bang, it's alright, you've got a brand new needle in there. Yeah. So you can see here Bex just doing her stippling and she's starting to get a, a better feel for the machine now. Um, she's starting to get more consistent curves and everything like that. And it all just comes down to practice. Now this, as I said, this is the very first time that Beck has ever been on the long arm machine. And so she's just getting the feel of the machine. She's just getting the feel of how to do curves. And um, by the end of it, she'll be, she'll be able to see from where she started to where she finished. We're not focusing on worrying about crossing over. We're not worrying about anything else. We're just worrying about her getting the feel of the machine right now. So we've just moved the machine up and she's starting on the middle part of the quilt now and you can see there that she's just getting a lot better feel for it now that she's had a bit of a break and she's doing some um, over this fabric I'm not real sure what it is but yeah it's not really the cotton's not really liking it and I've actually got polyester cotton in there and it's actually breaking it so I'm glad that I'm not using um, that Beck's not using cotton because it'll be breaking every other five minutes so um, you do really have to be careful about what you do put in a quilt um, I understand that not everybody's got a uh, champagne budget for fabric and all the rest of it but um, think of your long arm quilter when you're uh, using some of your fabrics try to avoid some of the things that have got vinyl or anything on it so how are you finding it Beck? Um, not as daunting as I thought it would be Cool. It's just finding the finding the groove. Yeah, and getting yeah. the. But you'll probably do a couple more of these quilts before you find your groove yet, and yep. each quilt will get better and better as you go. Um, it's just remembering not to look directly at the needle and just look a little bit past of where you're going to go, as if you're driving your car. Um, as you would have heard me say before, that you don't look directly at the tip of your bonnet when you're driving a car you look a little bit further ahead same as when you're riding a bike or anything like that and we're just sort of filling in the spaces at the moment so. yep so you'll un unlatch the sides because it's locked in at the moment so the bars don't move so that top one and just click it back and that one as well yep and then see how it just gave it you can just now pull the top towards you yeah just care for the wires under there yep and just pull yep towards you so the next thing that you're going to learn, so we're not going to actually put this with the binding on to finish it Friday. Mm -hmm. So we'll just, that's all you had to get done this week. Yes. And that, so next week, part of your finish it Friday will be to put the binding on. So you already know how to put it on on the top, but actually sew it by hand on the bottom. Yes, I know, I'm cruel. Yes. <laughs> Gee, how quick you agree. <laughs> so nice, Beck. I know. Some things we just need to agree to straight away. Yeah, that I'm cruel. Awesome. <laughs> uh, sometimes. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> I am not mean. I am not cruel. <laughs> but I guess I did just swear at you by telling you you were going to hand sew. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that is why you are cruel. They're mean to me. <laughs> you know I haven't done it before. Yeah, and there's a first time for everything. <laughs> so whether you do it this week or next week, you're still going to have it. I'm still doing gonna, it. You're still doing it. <laughs> just like the quilting. You're still doing it. <laughs> and just think, by next week you'll know how to put a binding on. And then you can honestly say that you have quilted and bound a quilt. And you've made a quilt too, because you made that one for the first retreat. I did. Yeah. Alrighty, do you want to hold it up? Ta-da!
Oh, it's all done. Well done, Beck. Look at you go. And you didn't really need my help at all. It was easy to do, wasn't it? It wasn't it that was. hard. Yeah. It wasn't as hard as... All right, so tell me, what did you learn? How to quilt. And that it's not... As hard as you think it is. And it's not scary one little no, bit. No, it's not. It's just finding your rhythm. That's yep. the hardest part, yeah. I think, is finding that rhythm. Yeah. And that comes with time. Yes. That comes with practice. That comes with having a little bit of patience with yourself that you don't have to get it all done perfectly. It have to be perfect. Yeah. No, that's right. Finished is better than perfect. There yeah. you go, ladies. It's Beck finished. has done her first quilting <laughs> and it's stipple and I think she has done amazing and... You'll just have to keep posted for the bonding. I'm sorry, ladies. We can't fit that in this week. No. So, yeah. So you can see there that Beck has finished her quilt. She's super happy with it, and I'm super proud of her getting in and having a go. She was a little bit nervous to begin with, but she got there in the end. Now all she has to do is put the binding on um, her quilt, and then it is finished, and she's got herself a cute little lap quilt. So if you like this video today, give us a thumbs up down below. Hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it, and that way you won't miss out on any future posts. And for those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed for Devon. Design Studio. Have a great day everybody and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.